Yeah, when when we look at a deal from from a lending perspective too, we 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 went through that too. We we were initially going after the the high dollar properties, mm -hmm. very high um, dollar, yeah. And because let's face it, you're getting the same money on on less work. Yeah. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to lending, uh, but your exit strategies are fewer and you know further between. If it doesn't work out, uh, plan A, then plan B and C is not a good alternative. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why we focused in on, uh, the income producing properties and the, uh, affordable housing on the, uh, on the single family stuff, because we know that worst case scenario, if we end up owning all these properties, we can still uh, get what our expected return would be mm -hmm. on a loan in rents until the markets come back up. And we know, we always know that uh, they will come back up. Uh, sure. if, we, if we own them, it's because everyone's a seller and no one's a buyer. Yeah. And if yeah. that's the case, <laughs> then, uh, you know, certainly we can still make an income on them until then. Right. Well, and that's, you know, that's a really important thing. A lot of people don't look at that. They have multiple exit strategies. You know what I mean? Where you're looking at that very thing where you, okay, hey, I can make the loan. It's all good. But if I needed to, I can operate it and rent it and it's still all good. Um, you know, and, and that's something like even in our single family business, you know, probably in 2015, we shifted gears to focus exclusively on, you know, this market at the time was like sub 250 houses. Now it's probably ticked up to, you know, 350 kind of thing as retail value. But that's all single family kind of first time home buyer affordable homes for this market where I'm at in Florida. And, you know, so kind of going back to that point, you said, Wendy, about fear. Good Lord, we've been buying those houses for six years, right? Now we did it in 15. I just sold a couple million dollar homes back then. And I'm like, look, I don't want to go through all that crap. It's, you know, it's a much easier to focus on just these cookie cutter three, mm -hmm. two, two, one, two, two, you know, little simple houses and we fix them up and sell them. If you needed to, you could rent them. And so we were able to buy hundreds and hundreds of houses during a time where a lot of people were thinking just like we were, Hey, there's going to be a downturn at some point and we want to be prepared for that. Right. And uh, I don't think any of us of course knew it was COVID, but you know, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and the other piece of that is we were stockpiling cash for liquidity during that same period of time. So that when actually the downturn hit and COVID hit, we had great financial liquidity. We were able to tell all of our employees, Hey man, you don't got to worry about your security, your job, but you better be kicking ass right now. Right. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> this is the time that it, we, because in our L10 meetings, we would talk about these preparations and condition our team to be thinking that way and improving systems, improving strategy. And then when the kind of the doo-doo hit the fan and it's like, oh my God, the world's falling off the cliff. It's like, that was one of the first meetings I was in California. I came back, we had our team meeting. I said, you guys don't have to worry. People are being laid off left and right. But what I'm telling you now, because I knew we stopped buying, we stopped buying apartments and just, we got to see where the world ends. Uh, lands, not ends, praise the Lord. <laughs> lands. Um, but it's like, look, whatever, call it 30% of our focus is on acquisitions. We're not doing that now. Right. So that focus is on better execution. And so you better step up. And, you know, we really held people's feet to the fire, but it was, uh, you know, a, a great, great learning experience too uh, for many of our team members because those people hadn't been through what we'd been through. Right. A lot of them. Right. Well, at the same time, this gave you an opportunity to be more commun. How do you say it? Communicative, communicative. Uh, yeah. You were able to communicate more <laughs> yeah. with your uh, current tenants. Oh uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. You, know, you had those uh, rent moratoriums or eviction yep. moratoriums in place, and you guys came out of it uh, really well because you were upfront and communicating. Yeah, how that worked out for you. Yeah, literally, I, I was in, we were in Tahoe for a month in March is what our family plan was. And then that thing all falling apart. So I think we we jumped ship like around the 21st or something. My wife's like, if we don't leave, we'll never get out of here, you know. So we <laughs> flew, came home. But that's exactly what I did. As soon as I got back, our first meeting, we huddled all of our regional managers, all of our property managers, all of our property management company partners on a huddle call and really kind of broke down. We went into this like kind of coaching mode and yeah. exactly what you just said, Bill, we had all of our properties had like at the ready texts with 
the unemployment office for that state, the local list of charities that would provide, you know, food help and whether it's the Baptist Union or the, you know, whatever, Red Cross or, you know, whoever was providing help. We had that listed. And then we actually did weekly coaching calls with our, um, you know, on sites to provide that kind of input to the tenants. And so we really did have a, a better result where, you know, even though maybe somebody got laid off from their job, as many, many did, there was at least communication and, and a willingness to work together. And that helped where, you know, we just didn't have giant onslaughts of rent strike kind of thing. You know, it's like, right. you know, mo and also most of our people, it goes to operations. We've done a good job to screen the people. Now, sometimes we just bought a property, so you inherited some bad seed. But right. most of our people, we've screened them and they're just decent working people that want to provide a roof for their family. And, you know, yeah, they got laid off from the you know manufacturing plant and, we tried to work with them, help them file for unemployment benefits or help them connect with the charity for food assistance. And, you know, so that engendered a lot of respect. And I think if you treat people like a human being, that helps in that, you know, dialogue and it helps right. with the result, you know. So definitely not an easy time, though. I mean, you know, just I don't think it's easy for anybody. We had to go through a lot of kind of ups and downs and government garbage and just all that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we did as well. But I, I tell you, we came out a much more efficient business on, on the other end of it. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, yeah. um, again, we have mentors, friends. We were prepared. We had a blueprint uh, for just in case. And it, uh, I didn't think it would be put into action that soon. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> literally yeah. Had, yeah. had a blueprint put in place literally what, at less than 45 days prior to this happening. So when it happened, we knew exactly what we needed to do. And it, yeah. it worked out. Worked out really great.